Hey, everybody, this is Mike with the One Stop Co-op Shop, and I have some special guests. Uh, this is actually set up by Will. So we have Will from The Hungry Gamer. Check out his awesome YouTube channel. And we also have Mark from Not Bored Gaming. Hi, Mark. Hi, Mike. And yeah, his Will has organized is not this. Awesome. I just want to point out that it was not an awesome channel, like my channel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, that's a good point. No, uh, also e equally or more awesome is that not more gaming. Um, <laughs> so yeah, we'll put this together. We're going to do what uh, we're calling the three idiots. And we're going to be uh, putting some of our favorite games from last year, some crowdfunding and some not against each other. It'll be two of us against uh, like mano a mano. And then the third person will be the judge. So just some goofy fun for a different spin on topless. And geez, I realized I, uh, I just said on my top solo video that I would not do any more topless. And I forgot about this. So here's one more. Ha ha ha. Sorry. <laughs> well, you know, if it helps, it, 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 you didn't do it. We we strong armed you. Yeah, well, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, I'm here against my will. They have one of my children as a hostage. It's not legal. It's not fun, but yeah. got to do what we got to do. And Mark threw a whole bunch of British legalism at us. And we assumed absolutely. He was wearing a wig and everything. I just didn't know what to do. We're just going to jump right in here, everybody. So for everyone's knowledge, this is a 12 team bracket. So there are four teams or four teams, four games that got a buy. Each one of us, our number one, got a pass to round two. And the roll of the dice gave Mike's number two a roll, a, a pass into round two as well. So at least two games, at least two games in the second Stop round. I'm, I'm happy. Deal. Stop this deal. <laughs> God. Ooh, that's a, uh, that's a little we're too not, We're soon not going to get all, uh, you know, controversial here. <laughs> too soon? Yeah. <laughs> yeah a, little, a, little, a little too soon. Like it's, it's not even over yet. All right. But we'll start with the first one. And the first competition is between myself and Mark. We have Senjutsu versus yes. Vast Mysterious Manor with Senjutsu oh. as the eight seed in the tournament. And I've played both of these, so I can be a, a somewhat non, uh, you know, I can be a knowledgeable judge for once. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let the bribery, I mean, convincing begin. Go for it, Mark. I mean, I, I don't really have to convince Malik on this one because Senjutsu isn't vast, mysterious manner. That's it. That's all there is to it, yeah? I mean, what you have here is obviously here in Senjutsu, it's developing into a fantastic skirmish game, a really, really good game. Another version that we played was nowhere near the final version, but it still showed what potential is there. And so we've gone through this Kickstarter campaign by Stone Sword Games. You've got James Faulkner and Paul David Allen, you know, really, really adding on to and adding on to this package. And suddenly this very, very well-priced game is starting to develop into what could be one of the prime hits of this year. And let's face it, Vast Mysterious Manor, it's 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 just another nice game from the house that does Root and from Leader Games, et cetera, with some nice artwork on there. But, you know, I think Will will even admit that the solo mode on Vast Mysterious Manor really, really isn't very good. Am I right, Will? Well, I will say the all the solo mode that's been created for Vast Mysterious Manor was made by this brilliant, brilliant content creator. I can't remember his name. Is oh Michael Kelly is the one that came up with it. So you know, I think the solo has really come along for Vast Mysterious Manor. And you see, the beauty of Vast Mysterious Manor is it is the quintessential asymmetric game. You are doing completely different things. It's incredible. You can be the skeletons, just completely ignore the spider, whatever you want to do. It's fantastic. Yes, the rules are a mess, but that's part yeah. of the fun. Because what no. you do is part of the no. fun. You sit there and you go and you say, if, we're, if I'm playing Mark and Mike's there and there's a conflict, I say, I don't care. It's between you two. You guys decide right now. You, you do you. And that's okay because every time it's incredibly fun. And the art is not nice. The art is amaze balls. And yeah, maybe. I just want to point out that with Sinjutsu, you said it is developing into, which means it's yeah. not there. That's no. all I'm going to say. Absolutely. Whereas, of course, Root, uh, Vast Mysterious Manor, should I say, or Root version 2 or Oath 0 0.5, whatever you want to call it, yeah, um, you know, it, it's solo mode is still developing. Is that correct there? Uh, and also, Well, this is not a solo show. Well, I know, but what you've done there is... Look, just because you only out. play with yourself doesn't mean we don't play with <laughs> you. <laughs> you could have... Yeah, this is getting, uh, it's getting a, little bit, uh, a little rough already, guys. <laughs> I think we better turn it over to the, to, to, to the, the judge here. Uh, All right, this oh, is... Uh, David and Goliath here, I think, Mike. And I think you're no, no, this is actually a tough here. one. So l <laughs> let me kind of work through my thoughts because um, I'm trying to be fair for this one. So, so I think... 
I think if we go off solo, what I have played, even though Senjutsu solo was pretty minimal when we played it, I think yeah. I would still prefer that to the official solo of Vast, which, as you said, Mark, is very weak. If yeah. I compared what we played as Senjutsu to my own solo mode, which kind of lets it play a bit more like the regular game, I would give Vast the win. Uh, but, let's get, but hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> hold on. There, there, there is, there's no rules here. You, you, um, I've got to mute you. Now, here's the thing, though. Vast also has multiplayer, which I think is what Will is banking on. But as That's many people have, uh, have complained about in our Discord, for example, about Vast, and I tend to agree with them, uh, I think Root is a much less fragile asymmetric multiplayer experience than Vast. Uh, Va- now, Mysterious Manor is better than the original Vast Crystal Caverns. I will, Crystal I will Caverns give it Caverns is hot garbage. Don't yes. even talk about but, it. Uh, but, but Mysterious Manor, I think, still has the same sort of issue where A, A takes down B, B takes down C, C takes down D. You can kind of get out of that, uh, that kind of like paradigm a little bit, but it's definitely still there. So if you have that one weak player, if you have that one player who doesn't understand their role, you can let another player kind of run away with it, which I'm not fan of the well, play with Mark. <laughs> yeah, I've not found it to be the case as much with Root. I'm making my decision, sir. Um, so, <laughs> and, and and then I do I do want to give credit to uh, the developers of Senjutsu. Um, the fact that they now have like asymmetric uh, cards in the deck, so not all the fighters will play the same. The fact that they're going to have terrain, a solo campaign, co-op mode, and and the uh, the competitive looks really fun for me too, for my taste. See, I, I am, uh, even though I, th- I think Vast is uh, pretty good, definitely better than Crystal Caverns, I think it's still far inferior to Root and Oath in terms of uh, leader games for my money. So I'm going to, and yeah, I did make a solo mode for it, but it, it's one of the few solo modes I made for a game that I don't love. Usually I only do them for games I adore. So I'm going to go for Senjutsu here. Oh Mark wins. Oh my God. Senjutsu. Yes, victory. Thank you very much, Michael Kelly. It's wrong what Will has always said about you. I think you're a decent person. Oh, well, that's good that I'm judging the next round. <laughs> you it's don't know okay. what Mike said about you. <laughs> I'm, I'm now equally I, angry at both of you. <laughs> All right, so in our next co- contest, we have number five, Paleo versus number 12, Camp Grizzly. We'll let Ooh. Mike with Paleo take it away first. Um, well, one of these games uh, just got its reprint and you can buy. And one of these games you can find on eBay for like $400. Uh, and that, that game is Camp Grizzly. Uh, <laughs> Paleo just won uh, the Spiel de Jar. It is a fabulous family game. You can also play it uh, in heavier game circles. I've never taught it to anybody and not had them enjoy it. I know you personally will uh, enjoy Paleo. Um, it is a lovely game. It has uh, a modular system where you can bind different adventures together. Uh, they've improved the art. That was one knock against the game. It did have uh, not very much diversity, not very much historical accuracy in its depiction of Paleolithic a man and woman, but uh, now it has that in the new edition. And yeah, they have a new expansion coming. It's fabulous, so even more content. Um, but even out of the base game, it's it's a really great game of kind of engine building in that your character gets stronger and stronger. Well, I, engine building is not quite the right word. Um, it's got great exploration as you kind of find out about these different like little adventures you can have. Again, lots of replay and modularity. Uh, Camp Grizzly, I love the theme. I love horror movies, but I've never been to, able to play it because it's so impossible to find. I've heard it's pretty much a random luck fest, and it's also a one versus many game, which is probably uh, one of my least favorite types of games because one of the has to play as the uh, killer. Am I wrong about that, Mark? Is it? No, it's, it's cooperative. Is it cooperative? Oh, okay. It's but, but co-op, yeah. does it, but, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, though, doesn't it have player elimination where you get knocked out of the game? Oh, it can do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, well, there we yeah. go, Will. I mean, I, I know that's everyone's favorite mechanic, not playing a game for the last half of the game because you got killed early. So, uh, but Mark, go ahead. Tell us about Camp Grizzly. Well, no, no, no. Before we do that, you just mentioned, uh, you know, um, uh, Paleo, uh, which you said is a tableau builder, but it's not really a tab- or engine builder, but not really an engine builder. It sounds like a very confused game to me. I mean, I've never played Paleo, um, but it sounds like even you don't know what Paleo is. Well, I mean, and to be fair, Mark, you did live games. it. You lived it. <laughs> yeah, this is true. I'm a little bit older than you guys. Wow, yeah. wow. I was there. <laughs> this is so personal. I feel attacked on your behalf. <laughs> but Camp Grizzly, yes, it's hard to find. There is no denying that. It was a Kickstarter back in 2013. They delivered it, and then they went off the radar. You can't find it. I managed to track it down at a price I was happy with, which is less than £100 for the base game oh, uh, for me. So, that, you know, I was pretty happy with that. And it is a game. It is uh, you play cooperatively. You try to avoid the killer, complete objectives, get to a, uh, a destination, and then escape the uh, the killer in the camp. It is the very essence of a film like Friday the 13th, all played for fun. The artwork is by a Disney 
uh, artist and it's absolutely fantastic you can teach the game in about five minutes flight it is so accessible and if you look online you can still buy the pewter minis elsewhere uh, online as well and the additional cards for all the expansions which are pretty much like rocking horse teeth to to uh, to get a hold of rocking horse poo hen's teeth to get a hold of but camp grizzly for me hits the spot i've never yeah. said either of those no, no one does. <laughs> rocking horse poo or hen's teeth yeah both very very rare, very rare. Um, okay got it got it, got it. <laughs> so so, uh, so yeah there's nobody i haven't talked camp grizzly to who hasn't loved camp grizzly and yes there is elimination in it it tends to come right at the back end of the game in kind of the last kind of uh, maybe last quarter if that of the game uh maybe the last fifth of the game uh, but you still have a great time interacting with people telling them to go here time to go there it's got a really good knack of just when you think you're in a position where you're going to win cards will come out and it will turn the entire game against you plays in about 60 minutes it's just a tremendous amount of fun and uh and yeah it's a pretty old game but you know uh, and hard to find but if you can track it down you have to pay the price it's well worth the investment i don't know anybody that's played camp grizzly that doesn't uh, uh that doesn't like camp grizzly let's put it that way well it does sound like no one can play it so that does make sense well, i can <laughs> all right so so here, here's where, where we are so i the fact that it's really hard to get. I've got like, pictures of you, Will, by the way. I've got pictures of you. I will post them on the internet. Wow, dude, it's not even like the final round. Like, you're yeah, going I know. Out. Really <laughs> nice. You wait till I get to the final so, round. Yeah. Now, so, so, the, so that it's got that going against it. Yeah. On the other hand, Mark did use a completely nonsensical <laughs> analogy, like, which is right. points for him. <laughs> now Rocking i did play poop. paleo yeah. and, I, and i did enjoy paleo so that, that you know makes me lean a little bit towards paleo but what's going to make me give this to camp grizzly is the fact that i refuse to let mike have three in round two right away <laughs> that's that's fair that's fair that I, 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 can, I can respect that logic loud <laughs> um but what makes me think about giving it back to Paleo is that would mean we have a Mark versus Mark round two. Man, look, I played. Does Mark played argue with himself? With himself and and I, I, I'm not sure. I, 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 I think you would have to argue for Voidfall for him. I can do that. I'm fine with Voidfall. So. All right, yeah, but no, I'm going to give it to Camp, Camp Grizzly because we cannot allow a clean sweep Ooh. in the first round. Two for. Well, well, well done. Well done, Mark. <laughs> Thank you very much. Keep those it's nonsensical cool. British exciting. things coming. <laughs> All right. This is the ne next one is another one I have a feeling I'm going to lose out on, unfortunately, in a tragedy. But we have uh, our number seven, which I believe was from Mike, is Root. And verse number 10, coming from me, Cosmic Frog. Oh, I know Mark played Cosmic Ooh. Frog. I think I, I don't Mike's know if I'm going to lose this. All right. Well, I, I'll, I'll, I'll jump, jump, jump in first. Could give Mike's voice a rest from that uh, uh, wailing of, of and crying from the beating he just oh, took. Ah, right, so uh, no, the injustice <laughs> of it all. Cosmic Frog. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna hold on to a little bit of the stuff here. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna pitch this with theme. Hmm. You are a three mile high space frog. You are powered by a piece of a star. You hop through the cosmos until you find a shattered world. Then you land on the pieces of the shattered world and you swallow mountains and lakes all into your belly. And sometimes another three mile high star powered cosmic frog will show up. And of course you have to fight. And if you get hit hard enough, you get launched into the third, the fourth, the fifth, even the sixth dimension, and you have to come back. Playable in teams. Are these the real themes? Like, yes. is this really? Wow. Yes. <laughs> Playable in, the in teams, solo, or pure competitive, up to six players. That's all I need I to drop a cosmic on this. frog in front of me. Oh, in the yeah. amazing frog meeples. Or me, yeah. uh, frog frog minis. Okay, root. <laughs> but so, uh, but by the way, Will, I, I know Mark didn't play this, but Will and I played a prototype at PAX called Cosmoctopus, which is uh, where you're trying to uh, suck up to a cosmic octopus that like rules the entire inky realm, which and, is yeah, sounds great, which has been uh, assigned 
by what? a company. It's been signed by a company we all know, but it hasn't been announced. I'll tell you guys after. Yeah, good Ooh. job. Uh, can, am I allowed to say who designed it at least? Without saying, I who don't know. So okay. good job, person. Yes, good job. <laughs> Congratulations, my friend. I'll, I'll message you later. Uh, so that's really cool to hear. Um, yeah. So I, 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 the one thing I'll say is, uh, Mark, I know you love Solo especially, and I forget what your opinion was on Cosmic Frog, but when I asked Will, should I get Cosmic Frog? To cover it for solo, he said no. I which said, I think it's already <laughs> only solo. I don't think Mike would like it. Okay, I'm just saying he, he like, literally Mike, de, de we recommended know Mike the game. And his that he's to for games that are not great, and so <laughs> okay, so he says it's not great. There we go. Whereas Root is well, uh, you know, well regarded Hold as one on, of the greatest games teacher. recently. You know that is exactly <laughs> not what I said. <laughs> um, so and, and and Mark invented the language, so he knows what I said. <laughs> this fair, is true. Yes, fair point. Fair point. Um, yeah. So Root, uh, fabulous asymmetric game, uh, great for multiplayer. And unlike Vast, this is one that you can kind of match together any two or three or four uh, factions, and they can all interact with each other in meaningful ways. They can all kind of uh, change up how the game plays. Uh, the original solo was not great, but Mark, I think you've played the clockwork or at least the app. And I think that is fabulously well done. A real like labor of love there. It's one of my favorite solo games. And I think, um, the, the infinite variety of taking different, like the explore exploration of different factions and kind of seeing how they play as much as that can be frustrating with the rules. That's probably the one biggest knock against it. Uh, just like learning all the rules and running all the factions and then like mixing and matching them with other factions, I think is endlessly entertaining. So, uh, I, and no knock against cosmic frog. I wanted to get it. Will told me not to, uh, but, but root I think is, uh, is one of the greatest I was protecting games. Mike from doing a video where he talks about the randomness of the dice and all of these I like things. Dice. It I looks like, like a fool because it is chaos. That game is chaos unbound. But I'm just going to leave it with this, Mark. Three Mile High, Star Powered, Space Frogs. Yes, I mean, Root yeah. Ru just has lovely, lovely art by Kyle Fair, and I don't think the theme can beat uh, <laughs> oh my gosh, uh, Cosmic Insanity. <laughs> He's reduced right, so to name dropping. This is where I can speak with some level of authority, because we've already seen my Cosmic Frog here. And behind my copy of Full Moon uh, Jacket, I have everything for Root. Oh, well. shoot. Look at that yeah. secret <laughs> re revelation there. Wow. <laughs> so I'm going to speak on both of them. Now, let's start with Cosmic Frog. Uh, I think it's some of the best artwork I've ever seen in a game ever. I tell you, don't get me wrong, Root artwork, absolutely fantastic as well. But Cosmic Frog, something different. The artwork on those cards is absolutely great. The neoprene mat is fantastic. The frog miniatures are great. And the whole premise and the setting takes me back to the 80s uh, when I did things I shouldn't have been doing. Uh, uh, so I've got a lot of love for Cosmic Frog. And also the solo mode, the much derided solo mode, uh, was by Ricky Royal. Um, so, you know, it's not an official solo mode. He's, he obviously has worked with, um, oh, what's the guy called who did Cosmic Frog? Um, uh, Jim Felly. Yeah, that's it, Jim Felly. Worked with Jim Felly uh, and created a really workable solo mode. Is it yeah. worth getting the game purely for the solo mode? Probably not. I did. Uh, but I wouldn't say, uh, you know, it's, it's something that you should do. Uh, but I think if you're going to play it with other people, it's a great and unique experience. Now, Root, uh, lead games, big tentpole game, of course. Fantastic artwork. Cole Worley. It is Cole Worley, isn't it? The yes. uh, Root, is, is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cole Worley. Um, took them a while to get the solo rules right. So the original uh, kind of uh, mechanical marquee, whatever it was called, uh, wasn't very good. Uh, but then the Clockwork expansion kind of fixed that, almost, but then it had some misprints that came out <laughs> on the board. And I and know you were very to... happy about the way that... Uh, that <laughs> yeah, the, the only way to get this was uh, to rectify this was to either print stuff out and kind of put it on your board, or if you're very lucky and got a very small window, you could get some stickers. stickers yeah. Or if you back the Kickstarter, you could get stickers. Now, I love Root. I think it's asymmetrical gaming at almost its finest. There's a lot going on with the various factions. And once you get the flow of those asymmetrical factions in the solo modes, they work very, very well. So Root has a hell of a lot going for it. And I think it's, you know, it is a great solo game. But for the very fact that they constantly just push solo players to one side and it required a fan-made solo mode to bring it into into play here um you know that kind of edges me off it but then again with cosmic frog exactly the same thing it is a fan-made solo mode but they didn't need any revisions for it or you mm. didn't need to print stuff off yourself or buy additional components so i come in at this you know 
kind of holistically, but from a solo perspective. And I think as much as I love Root, I'm going to give this to Cosmic Frog because ah. I just love the artwork and the uniqueness of it. Yep. So, Will, you're through with Cosmic Frog. And the good news is that stops Mike from having three in round two. <laughs> oh, I didn't think about that. Right, okay. Oh, yeah, well, so if, if it's, I was ready with it because if it sounded like you were going to go to the evil <laughs> empire, I was going to throw that out. <laughs> I don't okay. know why the I, empire, but I, I fully respect that, and I agree 100%. Mark, in fact, I, I said this several times. As much as I like Root, I don't even play with the stickered uh, revisions. I play with the the uh, um, the Automa Project designer's right. preferred rules, which Leader Games did not go with. So there are some things right. that are still different in his original that I think work better. I think they made some bad calls. So yeah. All right. Well, last one for round one. This is going to be. I think it's going to be a blowout one way or the other. <laughs> We have Either number way. six. Number six, Kanban EV oh. versus number eleven, Theurgy. I've I've not played either of these, and I've been interested in both. So this should be fun. So all I'm right. assuming Mark is Kanban since he's all about the big uh, Vital Lacerda games. And yep. you're yeah. okay. All right. Well, who, who would you like to hear about first? There. Um, we just heard from Mark explaining his judgment. So let's hear from you again, Will. Okay. So we have Theurgy. Another wonderfully themed game. You are a forgotten god. Almost forgotten. You got literally two followers left. And there's everyone is their own forgotten god. And what you have is you are striving to bring your religion back, build your temple so you become the god of the land. But not only are you battling all these other gods, you're battling science. Alchemy, you know, that kind of science, which is a growing. So you have these complete non-believers. So you're sending your acolytes around the board, using powers, performing miracles, summoning monsters, doing all kinds of stuff, and slowly trying to convert these other people to follow you. But the fun part is you can convert the other players' followers. You're like, yeah, I, I know you're a worshiper of dainty, but wouldn't you rather follow Ooh. Kelly? And they're like, oh, my gosh, you're right. Kelly's way better than Dainty. But then, of course, Mark can come right back and then take him back and take some of yours. Or Mark can summon a monster to go in and just eat some of your followers and then say, see what happens when you follow Kelly? This uh, is what monster happens. eating is definitely a pretty pretty strong selling point here, I got to say. And so yeah. you're, you're going through. And the so you basically got area control. It's an area control game with a bit of the scythe style action selection mm. you have four core actions you can do which makes the game exceedingly easy to teach and you always have to move it so you can't do the same thing over and over again and each different god has their own special power like one god the the blue god gets to move twice two hexes instead of just one hex which means in one turn you can cross the map with all of your people or the red one if they don't move around they can convert more more uh, cubes or followers to to them to themselves. Each of them plays completely differently. It has a very hard, very challenging solo mode. And after Mark and I did a game, we said, you know, you could really do a cooperative. They have done a full cooperative mode. Oh, in the official box, all coming soon. That is Theurgy. Let's hear about the game that's so dry it's going to set the computer on fire. Kanban. Man, you say this is dry. You mentioned Theurgy. Right at the beginning, you mentioned Theurgy was about forgotten gods. Let me tell you about Theurgy. I played it. I kind of enjoyed it. I'd forgotten it existed. That's how Ooh. much it's stuck in my mind. But Theurgy oh. is a uh, Theurgy is a fine game. It you know he has a, nothing to it, argue when he just falls back on mean quips. <laughs> it's a fine game from first time designers. I know it's their second time to get it to try and get it launched. I'm really glad that it got back to the AG. But by what you just said, it's literally a game about bullying people into your way of thinking. Yeah. Uh, it's a little bit of colonialism. It's a little bit of if you don't like what I say, my dog's going to bite you. Yeah. And that it just seems a little bit mean for me. Now, when you get to Kanban EV, right? First of all, I got no interest in Isn't cars. Camp Grizzly yeah. about killing a bunch of campers. Yeah, this is a different round entirely, Will. You, you already round. made your choice. Yeah. There. yeah. <laughs> all right. I'm just, I'm just making sure that, you know, for everyone listening, if you're wondering, no, Mark, no Mark cares about life. <laughs> <laughs> no backsies. Um, so yeah, Camel EV, about cars. I don't care about cars. I don't care about making cars. But what you've got here is just a, an, a, a kind of a, a 
confluation, conglomerate, I don't know, confluence. That's what I'm looking for. That's right. That's right. <laughs> a conflagration yeah. of euro. <laughs> of everything euro that everywhere. needs to happen to network. You've got these wonderful production qualities from Eagle Griffin games. You, and you know that's always going to be stellar. Yes, the games are expensive, but there's a reason it's because of this. You've got Vidal Asserters patented workers uh, action selection type mechanics but set in a car factory you've got some wonderful little metal car miniatures with it and the aim of the game on the solo which is designed by david turtsy and it's the finest beetle asserted solo that there is the aim of the was game it is designed not- by david turtsy the name of the game is to is to not get fired i mean that's the aim what a great thing to do to actually try and better yourself not to bully people into not liking you but to try and better yourself to produce high quality cars that the public wants and be better at your job at doing it i think it's just a fantastic connection and of uh, mechanics and mechanisms should i say of the theme which goes on there of the production quality of the solo mode it is just absolutely great and nobody gets bullied nobody My, will mike that is the most euro pitch ever here is a drive <laughs> game about trying not to be fired. Yeah, like, that is your here. every day. <laughs> Here's your game about doing your job. Hey, I, I don't know you will, but I, I do my job quite well. I'm not in danger of being fired. <laughs> <laughs> I like that fingers crossed at the end there. Uh, this is a tough one, guys. This is a tough one. Yeah. Uh, it's so Euro. It's because the both these Euro are games game. I have not played, and both these are games that I am legitimately very interested in playing. And even more so, Theurgy, after you said it as a co-op mode. Um, that we get no credit for, Will. We we should be... I mean, the reason you, you shouldn't want this forward anyway, because we got no Spondulics from this, mate. Oh, it's not the... The version that we came up with that we said was great, they were like, yeah, that would work, and now here's one that's good. <laughs> <laughs> is, what, is what they pretty much right, well, you, should, you still deserve like an idea by or a story by credit uh, <laughs> yeah. so it's yeah, so a Kanban um, Mark uh, let me ask let me interrogate a business I haven't played either of these uh, Mark you build the cars do you race the cars because you know I like car well, races <laughs> there is a track and you take you take the cars around the test track and that triggers certain things in the game oh. you also design the you design the cars you buy the parts you build the cars Ooh. you ship them through the factory and you put them onto the onto the test track i used to play a lot of uh, i used to play like a lot of gran turismo to you know where i would be modern modding my cars and stuff and trying to make them the best they could be so that, that's a big yeah. selling part uh will would you say that there are workers you have to move around in theurgy no no, unless you would acolytes. argue, unless you would argue that in Scythe you're moving workers around. No, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Then, then no, no. Yeah, no. that's more area control. Okay. Uh. I'd say there are slaves in Theogy. <laughs> Maybe if <laughs> you're the guy. Don't make me the slave supporter if I vote one way or the other, Mark. Come on now. That is under go, 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 go to Mark's European car sweatshop. <laughs> <laughs> German engineer, uh, which is fine. What's from dog technique? I think. Oof. And I do you think really from want to previous give experience, three? if I got both of these, one of them would be a sure bet for culling on shelf life. <laughs> and the other one would be Kanban. <laughs> no, I think I think Kanban would be the one that would get called probably. It's because I've not, you know, as much as I've enjoyed them for competitive, I just have not. Um, it is the best the, solo. Well, you know what? Hold on. I'm, I'm not voting yet. I'm not voting yet. Uh, wh- wh- one quick question, Mark. <laughs> My biggest yeah. complaint in every Vila Lacerda solo mode that has been designed by him, I haven't played once designed by other people, has been that it's the same thing every time. Like you have like, here's a puzzle to beat. Like you have to do these three things. You know how he has like the check marks, like do these yeah. four things for like the middle yeah. difficulty, do these five things for the uh, highest difficulty. Does yeah. Kanban work like that? Or is it a more replayable, more varied experience? It is. It, it does have that mechanism at the end of it, but there is the ability to get fired in Kanban as well, which you don't have in the other ones. So okay. in the other Vitla Serta games, there's no loss in there. You just yeah. don't achieve a set score, whereas in Kanban, there is a loss mechanism in Kanban. So you can uh, lose the game and you can lose and, it. And Will, and Theory, is, is it an Automa that plays against you? You can play as many as you want against you. So you could play against multiple. And, and, and they're they varied, all... but like you said, the different guys have different powers. Yep. Yeah, I'm going with Theory, Mark. I'm sorry. Theory wins. <laughs> No. And that, that's just right in my wheelhouse, whereas what you were saying is kind of the thing that I like least about the Lacerda, specifically solo. I think Lacerda for competitive is amazing. And it does yeah. sound like this is better, but it still probably yeah. would not last more than five plays for me. 
I yeah, as as I looked at the brackets that came out, I was like, you know what? There, there's some looking at who was going to be judging. I was like, uh oh, <laughs> that's right out. I was like, <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to like, play the system and like suck up the judges for the next round. I'm just trying to be honest with my yeah. thoughts. Ooh. Speaking of the next round, <laughs> we are in round two where we have Mike's number one game, his game of the year, Bullet versus Sinjutsu, the darling of round one. Mm. And that's so that's a number one versus a number eight. I'll uh-huh. let uh, number eight go first, Senjutsu. Senjutsu. Well, you know, we've already spoken about Senjutsu. And it yeah, is so don't bore me with the same argument. Oh, come on. But it's not. It's, you know, it's, it's an exceptional skirmish game with fantastic looking miniatures on there. A pretty unique setting for a skirmish game. They've got a cultural consultant on board. I don't believe that, cult, uh, that Bullet has a futuristic <laughs> cultural consultant on board. Yeah. I don't think, I don't think <laughs> I do. You're right. You're right. That's, I mean, yeah, dare you, level 99. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and there are a raft of expansions already planned for Senjutsu. So there's loads coming out with the Kickstarter there. Um, price-wise, yeah, it's a little bit more expensive than Bullet, but you get a lot more gameplay in Bullet, and your games will generally last a little bit longer. And there is a uh, a cohesive. Did you just said there's more campaign. gameplay in Bullet. Yeah, is this is what he said. said. Exactly. Yeah, I, I thought so. Okay. More gameplay than there is in Bullet. Oh, <laughs> oh, different. Okay, okay. Yeah. Just a second. Yeah. Just a second. You know, yeah. in, in England, uh, "in" means "than." It's the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> So I think again, Senjutsu should win on this because I've got Bullet and I I'm, I got Bullet on Mike's and, and yours recommendation, uh, and it, it's fine. But it doesn't hit my table nowhere near as much as Senjutsu has hit my table, and that's even the prototype state. I think a Bullet is a, is an okay game, but yeah, as a solo game, I think Senjutsu has more going for it than Bullet. All right, I mean. I, I, I think Sajutsu could be good. Like, like you said, when you argued against it in round one, Will, you know that it's it's all kind of like hopes and dreams at this point. And I, I think they'll probably deliver. I'm, I'm not trying to be mean or anything. I, I like those guys. Uh, but Bullet is fabulous now. Um, Will, I know it's like one of your wife's favorite games. I know you don't like it as much as she does. Oh, uh, oh, <laughs> so, oh, yeah, I'm not sure how that'll influence your vote. Plus, and and, plus and I will minus. admit... Um, she really does, doesn't like Sinjutsu, not because of the game, because that is the type of game that she... Because it's British, and she's she's hates. anti-British, that's why. Yeah. Sinjutsu is British? I'm, I'm, <laughs> well, I know it's British makers, but... I... <laughs> yeah, so, 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 but I will say on the same thing, my wife doesn't let me play Bullet with her. She well, yes, says, yes, just yes. set it up and leave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I, I, I know that not m- most people don't like Bullet as much as I do, but most people like Bullet. It's maybe not their number one, but it's my number one. Um, I, I think it's a fabulous puzzle game. I think it's very quick to play, incredibly quick to set up, so it's fun to just like throw on the table and play. Uh, Will, we've had fun, you and I, playing competitive um, or, or losing competitive at PAX. Uh, I think co-op works great. I think uh, solo works great. I think it's one of those few games that is fabulous for all three uh, modes of play. I think it's got an oh, amazing variety, even out of the base box, which is much, much cheaper than Sinjutsu's base box. It doesn't have miniatures, but it does have really nice little like tokens you put on a board. Um, board tokens in the base box. Yeah. <laughs> sure, you sure, to, sure. You have to spend extra money to get the, yes, uh, the yes, deluxe yes. tokens. That, that, that is true. Yeah. That is true. <laughs> um, I, I think Sinjutsu probably wins by components, which is not how I judge games, but if you want to, that's fine. Um, <laughs> ooh, 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 shade. Um, but yeah, so uh, I think Bullet is endlessly entertaining, and it is one that will be hitting my table for a long time and i know it'll be at least in your house for a long time will whether or not you're the one playing it so i'll leave it up to you i'm not i'm really not sure which way you're going to fall on this Ooh. one you know this is i'm, the, just, this thinking, is... I'm just thinking will you know you obviously you know you support james and paul with the whole hogs of war thing i think you consider them friends it's, it, it really is up to you this yeah how many people you want to let down right now <laughs> wow wow <laughs> are you implying that i would let down the your entire country is that, is that what you're I, I think that's the way this is going. With all the Bob jibes here, I think there's a sense of xenophobia creeping up right now. Yes. <laughs> I'm not sure that that's the uh, the sun never sets on the English Empire that you to throw around the xenophobia <laughs> thing. I don't know that that's uh, a good pitch. All right, but th- this is the hardest. This was the one that I was actually worried about being in competition for, because this is a very, very close. Because neither of these games is a style of game that I love. Mm-hmm. Both of them are really, really well done. So I'm leaning towards where did you both go wrong in your argument? <laughs> so God, it's like being at school this. Yeah? I know, right? So so now Mark <laughs> said specifically that Bullet has more gameplay. 
You did say that. Uh, he did reverse himself, to be fair. Well, it doesn't matter, you know. I have a, <laughs> you know, th th we live in a 24-hour news cycle. That's already been <laughs> yeah. The sound happened. bites already been seen by a thousand people. Yeah. <laughs> now, on the other hand, though, Mike tried to pitch Bullet's great components without mentioning you got to pay extra for them. So that's a pretty, pretty harsh hit. I, I wasn't trying to be. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you can tell which one of us makes games, can't you? There, basically. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, right. I'm definitely used to some thrown together like cardboard paper and note cards. Right. <laughs> so then it comes back to my wife really likes the one, and that's a like that's that's real that's big. Like if I wanted just to have a night to do what I want, I could I could literally set that up, get a bottle of wine, and I could just. Go off. Is Sarah going to watch this? Is Sarah going to watch this now that you're manipulating her in such a fashion? Oh no, she's. I've done that. Done that before, and she's fine with it. Um, <laughs> but, That's marriage right there. That's love. See. Yeah. But <laughs> on the other hand, with Sinjutsu, when that shows up, I am excited about the campaign mm -hmm. that they're putting together. So a little solo campaign, and they've added a lot of the stuff that they're adding is very exciting to me. Which means, as a lover of chaos. I'm rolling a die. You're rolling oh, that no, die? No, that that no, one no. looks a little untrustworthy for randomization. Yeah. All right. Okay, then. Um, Mark, are you odds or evens then? I'll go evens. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it's <Hey>! not one. <laughs> I knew it. Good job, big one. Yeah, there All right. You go. Bullet yeah, it is. You know what? <laughs> I'm okay. I'm okay losing to Bullet. I know it's much loved game. It's not. I would have been fine to losing to Senjutsu. I'm really excited. Those for that are one. both very fun. They're 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 both very so people are like truly they're both very fun. And um, Mark. I mean, just, like literally, just to, to pause for a second. I'm trying to think. Uh, what have we not heard of yet? Voidfall and what was the other one that's not mine? That uh, Ping Yao and Exceed. Yeah. So literally, every one of these twelve games, I've either played and enjoyed, or um. Or it's a game I have looked up. So, Mark, I didn't say this during the round because we were against each other, but I like actively sought for a copy of Camp Grizzly for for a year or so before finally giving up because I'm such a big horror fan and I and I heard such good things about it, you know. And and uh, and Kanban is my most the Vital Asserted game I'm most interested in, and Cosmic Frog I was interested in getting a copy. So, yeah, I I, I don't mind if any of these win. I think these are all good exactly games. right. Yeah, yeah. And the uh, yeah, I think the. We're probably all going to agree that the Sinjutsu bullet round was the hardest one. I think all of us are going to agree by the end. But I, I like both those games a lot. I, I want to play Sen the heck out of Sinjutsu when it arrives, for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, now moving into Voidfall, Mark's number one Ooh. versus Mark's other one, Camp Grizzly. Now, Mark, you're going to have to allow Mike to argue for one of these for you. So I'm going to allow you to pick which one you're going to argue for, which one you're going to let Mike argue for. See, see, the devil in me wants Mike to argue for Camp Grizzly because he's never played it. I've but, read the rules. I, I've played do keep in it. mind, whichever one wins faces off against Bullet. Right, okay. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm not playing politics. I'll just, I'll just shoot straight. <laughs> so I do think, though, but in the interest of fairness, Mike should uh, um, should argue for Voidfall. He has played right. Voidfall, and uh, and therefore he should argue for that. So, Mike, I'm going to let you go first on Voidfall then. I mean, it, it is Mark's number one, so he himself thinks it's better than Camp Grizzly. <laughs> I'll say it <laughs> again, uh, which is interesting. Uh, but besides that... Um, yeah, this is a this is the same team of designers, Nigel and David Turtsey, that did uh, Imperium, which is also a fantastic game. This is an uh, awesome effort for Mind Clash. You're going to have beautiful components. We know how Mind Clash does their stuff. Um, I have actually not played a competitive, but both solo and co-op are really well thought out. It's an entirely different mode of play. It's not something that's thrown in. It's not like some like random kind of thing they threw together. It uh, is a game with great variety in the factions. It's going to be even better when we see the advanced factions, but even in like the basic factions, you get a lot of variety. Nice replay in the different scenarios they're doing and different like technologies you have access to. A really thought-provoking uh, play of these cards, these action cards. Now, a knock against it is crazy iconography, but they've been simplifying it in every iteration. Every design update they do, they've talked about cutting icons out. They've talked about cutting complication, making it a, a bit more easier to learn game. And I still learned it and was able to teach it after playing it twice. So I think it's a, a really solid, um, you know, there are a lot of Euro-ish sensibilities, 
but I think this one can appeal to those big sci-fi 4X fans as well. Combat is exciting. Upgrading your ships and stuff and getting like dreadnoughts and things is exciting. This is one that I'm really into. And I know Mark, like I said, is more into it than Camp Grizzly, to be fair. Um, but I guess it all depends on what you're more into, Will. And I think you would love this one too. So that, that's my pitch for Voidfall. Yeah, and you know, I, I can't really argue against any of that because it is my number one game I covered last year. So how do I argue against the game I covered last year? But I can a little bit because what Camp Grizzly has that Voidfall doesn't have is accessibility. Yeah. As I mentioned earlier, you can set uh, Camp Grizzly up and you can play it with anybody and they'll have a fun time. Now, I guarantee that if I sat down with my wife or other people to try and teach them Voidfall, three hours into the teach, just before we started playing the game, yeah, <laughs> everybody would have already caught the bus home at that point. Yeah, My wife would be divorcing me, the dog would have left home, the kids would have gone. Uh, it would be that kind of thing because there are rules and there are micro rules and there are rules beyond those micro rules as well in Voidfall and the decision trees are overwhelming. I'm arguing against a game with mechanics that I absolutely love because I love all that stuff, but it's not for everybody. Whereas Camp Grizzly, for pure fun, pure accessibility, for a 60-minute game that you can have with a beer and some pretzels and just have fun reliving all that, then Camp Grizzly absolutely hits all that. But I am still arguing against my number one game, <laughs> which I cannot wait to get my hands on the final copy of. So I am... I'm split here, Will. Yeah, I've got my favorite old game, if you like, and my favorite new game. Mm. So, yeah, that's good. Well, and it, to be fair, it does sound like after that three-hour teaching from you, you'll be having lots of beer <laughs> as well. Yeah. So, you know, you do have that. So, I, I'm a little torn on this one. So, what Void? So, Voidfall was out on Kickstarter exact same time as another 4X game, Fractal, Fractal which I think yep. I really like. I didn't put it in there because I worked with them a little bit, so I was like, I shouldn't put that as a part of my list. So I, Fractal, I think, is very good. And they were both up at the same time. Everyone's like, which one should I get? Like, they were the same. They're nothing like each other. Not at all. Yeah. What Voidfall's I like good. about what I like about Voidfall is that Euro bit, because I do mm -hmm. like a Euro game. I am a fan of the Euro. However... I do have a bit of butt hurt about it because I tried to preview it and I got mm. stonewalled. So there's a little butt hurt in there. Now, with Camp Grizzly, I don't care about horror at all. Horror is not my thing. Like, it's so far down the list of themes I like. So sci fi, way better than horror. And so, but it does have the easiness to teach. So I could teach my wife how to play. But my wife oh, hey. hates horror. But your wife would be playing bullet there, so it wouldn't come up. That's her, and she hates yeah. horror, so she wouldn't be interested in playing. <laughs> okay. But it's American. You know, a Voidfall is not. A Voidfall space, Camp Grizzly, it's set in, you know, a quaint Americana. Oh, so it's... Just, it's, it's with, it's, with it's, slashers. So, so your pitch is how America, you go camping and people kill you? That's your pitch? <laughs> I, yeah, is it, but isn't that true? I mean, I little, mean you know, fair enough. Fair enough. Seen, but a little too films. soon. Mark, you just sunk yourself. Mike, congratulations. Wow. Voidfall wins. Wow. All right. But, Voidfall. But Mike wins, but I win. I mean, I was going to say, either way, yeah. Mark wins. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And whoa, my goodness. Now I'm facing off against myself with Ping Yao, the Golden Pawner. I think both mine. of us played Ping Yao, right? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you played Golden Pawner, though. No, I didn't play Golden Pawner. You're but right. That's very sp specific there versus Cosmic Frog. So, Mark, I think you have to argue my Cosmic Frog. Okay. And okay. Uh, I'll go for the, with, with, with Ping Yao, because you didn't play Ping Yao, did you, Mark? I didn't know. No, I didn't. Okay. Know. I played Dunhang, but not Ping Yao. All right. So, um, well, Mark, why don't you go ahead and go, because I was just talking. So we've already touched on some of the beauty behind Cosmic Frog, the absolute unique nature of Cosmic Frog. Now, as I say, it's not solo mode but it's for everybody, but I got it purely for that solo mode designed by Ricky Royal, master of solo, and mm -hmm. it, it works really, really well. It creates a nice puzzle, a unique time for it. Now, I also know that I could absolutely teach Cosmic Frog in about 20, 25 minutes, Will, and everybody will have a uh, grasp of what's happening, which I think is far better than trying to teach somebody the vagaries and the is of the Chinese banking system, which you get in Ping Yao. Uh, we'll <laughs> mention dry euros earlier. I mean, when we talk about the Chinese banking system, I don't think it gets much drier than that, does it, Will? So, what, what I mean, don't get me wrong, 
Ping Yao's got some beautiful artwork for the style of game that it is, but there's no three mile high frogs there. There's no LSD trippy cards coming out at you. There's no bouncing off into the void and coming back on into a different hex part of your wonderful neoprene mat uh, with your three mile high frog miniatures and your crystals all over the place. I think, uh, Mike, you haven't got Cosmic Frog yet. You need to reach out to Jim Felly and get yourself a copy of Cosmic Frog because if you don't, enjoy, well, you will enjoy the solo, but you will love it as a multiplayer game mm -hmm. as well. And it is dripping in all that wonderful cosmic theme. And I I'm sure that um, Ping Yao is dripping in all the theme of Chinese banking. <laughs> well, no, to, to, I can't argue with Cosmic Frog being a brilliant competitive game. But what I will say is, so yes, theme on Ping Yao is a little dry. Oh. However, the Golden Pawner gives you all that joy of Pawn Stars, Mike. You know what I'm talking about, that show, Pawn Stars. I, I, I don't know Pawn Stars. Oh, well, this is not like a great <laughs> channel. Basically, they found some... Would, can we just rectify the spelling of porn here, please, yeah? P-A-W-N is what you're talking about, isn't it? Yeah. 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 That's and the okay. gold. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the, the, yeah the, the golden pawner. You get to open pawn shops. So there's TV show, Mike. So it's on like the History Channel. She's never been on the History Channel. But it's, I, I think I get I get the idea. Yeah. So, you know, they have horrible people trying to sell junk and they say, it's historical. It's great. But the lovely joy of now you also get, not only you're opening your banks, but you're opening ridiculous pawn shops. And now the reason I specifically picked the golden pawner so if you remember the game, Mike, you have that remittances thing where you're, you know, yeah, yeah. it takes that and makes it fun. It takes that part. <laughs> See, of the I already game. thought that was fun. That was my favorite part of the game. Right, but it makes it way more fun. Oh, okay. Because what it lets you do is it lets you move your money around 20 times easier. Because if you remember, mm -hmm. you couldn't, it was really hard to move yes, money yes. to different banks, but with the Golden Pawner expansion, it changes the remittances up, and suddenly you're able to put your money in a lot more places as you're loaning, taking these remittances out, you're putting money onto the remittances, also as far as well as moving them around the banks, and it just suddenly makes the game open up so much more. And talk about components. Those Saichi, those silver ingots, are amazing. And you don't have to pay extra for them. This is a game that I hate a dry euro. And when I was asked by Tyson to cover this, I was like, oh my gosh, you want me to cover a game about Chinese banking? It is on, if it had come out last year, like it was supposed to, it would have been in my top games of the year list. That's how good this game is. So I'm just slightly worried by some of your choices, though, Will, and I just want to get this. So we've already had theurgy, which is about bullying people into believing your state of mind, and now you've got these. Whoa, whoa no, no, no! We we can't bring in other stuff. Remember that? No, no, yeah, no taxis. No but, taxis. I mean, no, it's, no, it's fine. Taxis. It's fine. I, I got my choice. But, I got my choice. But yeah. now, but now we're talking about extreme capitalism as well. So you know, I'm 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 sensing a very definite way in which the extreme capitalism here, in China is it. Is it your game? Is it your game, Mark? About like literally eating planets. Wasn't that what? Yeah, we absolutely. Yeah, but not <laughs> Earth. Yeah. All right, fair, <laughs> enough, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, yeah. So th this is a tough one for me because I am very interested in in uh, Cosmic Frog, but I played Ping Yao and enjoyed it a lot. And Golden mm -hmm. Pawner only looks like it would make things better. So I am going to go with the Devil I Know over the Devil I Don't. But Cosmic Frog still sounds great. I would like to play it. I probably will reach out since you both recommended it now. Um, but yeah, so we'll we'll go with uh, Golden Pawner for Ping Yao going forward. Oh, Sorry, Mark. Bruh. Yes, oh, don't apologize and, to and me. Sorry, me. Sorry, Will. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know, right? I, I feel bad about it. But oh, that's right. Come... They were both Will. I forgot about that. Yeah. yeah. Good call. Good call. Next time I come, next time I come back to these coasts, I'll bring my uh, fully painted cosmic frog. Nice. <laughs> All right. Here. Oh my gosh, I got three in a row here. So now we have Mike's number two, which got to buy exceed versus my number eleven seated theurgy, the last game. Wow of the second round and I'll, I'll, I'll jump right in nobody even knows what exceed is like that's <laughs> i mean yeah you're mark, right that they've, they've definitely had five seasons uh, that have mark you don't well. even know what this is you don't know what it is uh, mm, and it sounds it's, it's, purely competitive all right i think it's like a battle system or some nonsense like that yeah. there's no solo there is that i made Oh, oh, yeah, wow. Fan -made <laughs> and and solo. it's incredibly well regarded, and Mark would love it, I think. Fan made solo <laughs> by the guy who wouldn't even support his own fan made solo earlier. <laughs> so he doesn't stand behind this question. <laughs> Versus the ability to play solo, co op, 
And it's only gotten better from when we did. Because we remember how much fun we had when we played there. He doesn't. He already co-op? said that. He didn't remember the game. <laughs> oh, but he remembers having fun. Hey, go, 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 back, go, go back and design another fan-made solo that you don't support. All right. <laughs> the old people are talking here. <laughs> Aren't I older than you, Will? Didn't we talk about this? Uh, no, I'm like uh, two months older than you or something. Okay, never mind, never mind. <laughs> uh, but, Mark, so what, what you got to think about here is all of the different variety that you get in Theurgy of the different gods playing so differently. And again, you can play solo. You can play solo against one other god. You can play solo against two, three, or four, as many as you want. Or... You can play this exceed season thing that no one knows what it is. I mean, well, you know, literally going for asymmetry is like the weakest way you could go when you're going against exceed, which each season has 16 completely different asymmetric mm-hmm. fighters. <laughs> uh, well, Mark, here's how I'll sell it to you because I know you haven't played it yet, I don't believe. Um, exceed is very much like Senjutsu, it is a fighting game. It's all card based, so it's a lot cheaper than Sinjutsu, but it is the same thing where you reveal a card. And so he's saying your other pick's terrible, is what he's saying. And uh, <laughs> yeah, so you reveal a card, and based on the different cards, you have different initiatives. Like Sinjutsu probably played Exceed, I would guess, that team, because it's a very similar system. And uh, it, it's, it's uh, even more asymmetrical. Every character plays totally different, has a totally unique deck. And it has tons of strategy because you not only have to like attack, but you can move around the arena. You can uh, play these cards to like boost yourself. Um, And not to toot my own horn too much, but my solo is incredibly well regarded and does allow you to play with every single fighter out of uh, the three seasons I've done so far. And we're adding in the other seasons. I work with some other people to add in the other seasons right now. So sounds like he's just pushing his own stuff is why he's talking about it. Oh my gosh. Well, (laughs) so yes, I I think you would love this one, especially with you enjoying Senjutsu so much, Mark. And I'm happy to teach it to you whenever you want. Um, And it's also fabulous for 1v1. uh, I mean, it's mainly a 1v1 competitive game. Mark, I'm happy to braid your hair if you'd like. (laughs) Oh my gosh. (laughs) All right. Anyway, go ahead, Mark. You, You decide. The very thought of Will braiding my hair is just literally... Oh, uh. Anyway, fine. So one of these games I played, obviously I played Theurgy. Uh, and I think Theurgy, from the British designers, is a um, it's a good... It's a, it's a really good game that they brought out and they put a lot of love in Theurgy. Just to do something different in, in, the work, in the game space, if you like. It offers a side-like mechanic in there with, well, it's not quite area control. You are spreading out and, and, and spreading your love everywhere. And, uh, and, and yeah, there's a lot going for Theurgy. I do like the asymmetrical <laughs> god powers that are in there. Now, Exceed, I know nothing about. Yeah, I just know that it's one of your favorite games, and I know that you uh, have designed a solo mode for it. I think it's... Uh, I, I can't remember where you rank this in Battlecom, where the Battlecom is a better game. It's exceed exceed better. is better it's, than Battlecon for. Uh, yeah. I, w- I would say for ninety five percent of players, Exceed's going to win out for most people because the big the big yeah. th- difference. You've played Battlecon, Mark? No, no, no. no okay. No. Well, yeah. The, the big difference yeah. is uh, Battlecon is like a z- kind of zero sum information thing, so you can right. like spend too long kind of APing. I still love Battlecon, but you can spend too long APing like exactly what your opponent could play. Exceed because yeah. you have random draw and these unique decks. It's a little bit faster, a little bit more like accessible. I played with my nine year old and my six year old. Like it's, it's I, I believe he said um, that if you love Pendulum Solo, you'll love Exceed. Yeah, that, that, that's, <laughs> that's what I set out. I was like, you know what? I can do a Pendulum Solo mode. Let's do that. There's the sand timers. It's great. <laughs> See, and now it comes down to the crux between the two of them. And I think, you know, we are going to have to approach this in a slightly different way. So you've got one game which didn't have a solo mode, which might design a very successful solo mode for, and then another game, which didn't have a co-op mode, we came up with an idea and it was kicked to the curb. Will. Um, yeah. So for but, that... But, but alone, lovingly kicked to the curb. <laughs> that, well, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter. It was our concept. They didn't even send a thank you. No, 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 only joking. So because of that, and just to support Mike, because, you know, you know, he's, uh, uh, we all know Salvation Road it didn't quite get the love it deserves, so I'm going to go with... I got it down here as well. Yeah, I've got Salvation Thanks, Mark. Road. <laughs> yeah, I got I got mine somewhere right here too. Yeah, I got, oh, it's right yeah. here. Like Salvation Road, and we're all looking forward to kind of what he's doing with uh, with Mana Meg as well, uh, Mega Man as well. So, um, <laughs> so having played that and think, you know, you know is, maybe he's onto something here. With a few more years under his belt, he might actually, you know, design something worth. Are you playing. really so, going to wow. pass? Wow. His, my, Mike's number one and number two into round two. You're going to give Mike two in the in the the quarterfinals. 
I am indeed going to give Mike oh, two in the quarterfinals. Gosh. Well, I'm going to go with X Seed. It sounds more up my street, and I'm willing to try it. Uh, I'm willing to try Mike's solo mode. I enjoyed Theurgy for what it is and what it was, and I hope it's very successful. But I think Succeed would hit more of a uh, more of a chord with me. So well, I'm, I'm glad you've let down your country. I'm, wow. I'm, well, that happens on a daily basis. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we are into the quarterfinals. There are three matches left for people keeping score. Mike has his number one and number two left with Bullet and Exceed. And Mark and I both have our number ones left with Voidfall and Ping Yao, Golden Pawner. Oh, those were all, all our number ones? That's interesting. Yep. I know that all our number one seeds made it in. I didn't realize yeah, Ping Yao was your number I, I one. Really, I really thought... Theurgy had a shot there. Once once I got past round one, I, I want to play it. I want to play it. I, I I remember you explained all the rules to me, and I liked everything you talked about. So I'm I'm into yeah, it. It's a cool game. It's a cool game. All right. So we have bullet versus voidfall. Wow, that's a different. <laughs> those are very oh. different games, aren't they? Whoa. Jeez. <laughs> what, one's so like not- a twenty minute game you can teach in like three minutes. The other one is voidfall. Uh, gosh, <laughs> you want to go first, Mark? <laughs> Wow. Okay. So, uh, Voidfall versus Bullet. Um, as you already know, I'm not Bullet's biggest fan. There's anything wrong with it. I'm not Bullet's biggest fan. I think you hit the nail on the head. It's a 20 minute game. You can teach him five minutes. It's great as a filler game. Bullet is a filler game. Does it have longevity in terms of constantly pleasing large groups of people? Can you yes. sit down? And you think <laughs> I've got a few hours to spare. I'm going to spend a couple of hours playing Void, uh, playing Bullet. No, you can't. Whereas with Voidfall, you've got a 4x game solo co-op competitive with a den- dynamic map dynamic cards that are coming out of the solo game which drastically alter what's happening on the board for you you have a wonderful range of technologies that you can do you've got asymmetrical factions that you can take uh that you take control of as well it covers all bases voidfall i think uh, and I'm not just saying this to win this competition. I think it's possibly the game I'm most excited about mm-hmm. receiving the final copy for because I think it's a complete package. It's got more or less everything going in there. It's probably going to be kind of almost peak Mind Clash. And I understand that, you know, Mind Clash have a barrier to entry. They are complex games. That it's a, but I think Voidfall is a game that the more you put in, the more you're going to get out of it. So for me, it has to be Voidfall. All right, so I just want to thank Mark I agree, an asymmetrical game with really amazing differences between solo and co-op play and, uh, and uh, competitive play, all of which play great. I think that is a great description of uh, Bullet, uh, as well as Voidfall. <laughs> but yeah, so one of them is accessible, is easy to play, um, definitely works great. You've actually played it, Will, and you know that it's fun. Um, and they didn't, uh, you know, you didn't reach out and get uh, stood up by the publisher, as you mentioned earlier. Um, True. The button yes, is strong. I, 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 I really like <laughs> Voidfall. I really like Voidfall. I will certainly, absolutely bust out Voidfall once every year or two, once I have my copy. <laughs> um, but in terms of a game, like in terms of actual time I would put into playing a game, in terms of uh, they already have two uh, new sets that came out. Uh, well, Star is coming out soon. If you want more content, so, if you like which it, is, which is just more of the same, basically. Not even the tiniest bit. Once you played it, Mark, uh, you you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so, yeah. So I mean, but, uh, but he did say it with confidence and with an accent, which makes me believe it. This is true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I think these are both fantastic games. I don't care which one you pick, uh, Will. But. Yes, in terms of like which one will actually be on my table and which one I know will be on your table, Will, whether it's you playing it, I don't know. Uh, it, Bullet is clearly the winner here. <laughs> yeah, so that, 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 that's that boy. Two, two totally different types of games for sure. And Bullet is enjoyable. And I would love to play Voidfall you with one it. of you. Yeah. Um, I don't know that I want to set that thing up and, and dive through it, through it myself because I will say in general, even with... The fractal and some other four X's I like. I don't usually like playing four X's by myself. Mm. Um, you, you usually I like okay, give, give me three or four people and we're gonna make a day of it and we're gonna play three hours and you know be be raging and table flipping and it'll be fantastic. Not much table flipping in bullet. It's it's over too quick. And yeah. you know, it was only Mike that would want a table flip because I think I beat him. Oh yeah, yeah, I did. <laughs> um, <laughs> yep, you did. But. <laughs> I think there is a deep fear in me that if Bullet wins, Mike might have both of the semifinal. 
And that cannot happen. <laughs> How many times have I been voted down just because of the bracket? <laughs> That's fine, though. I, I'm totally cool with that. I'm totally cool. I have to give it to Voidfall, even yes. though my wife would never play Voidfall, and she likes Bullet. So and I'm I can't teach it- you Voidfall, Will. It's a great game. I can, I can definitely show it to you on TTS sometime. All right. Giving it to Voidfall. I'm not sure that's the right choice, but I, I am- have to stop the steal. <laughs> wow. <laughs> which, which brings us to our, uh, to our last round, or our second to last round, Ping Yao, Golden Pawner versus Exceed. Now, these are very similar games. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Chinese banking system versus punch in the face. Fireball. <laughs> I think that's the next expansion for Ping Yao is a uh, punch in the face fireball banking. Um, so let's see. What have I not already said about Exceed? Uh, so it, it, just to kind of uh, sell it again and with that comparison to Senjutsu, Mark, because that's what you played. That is a very similar system, like very, very similar. Um, Exceed adds in a bit more consideration of range. You know, Senjutsu, clearly you have like at most a Naginata or something that maybe like lets you attack from two hexes away, Mark. In Exceed, you have some characters that are like fireball throwers and attack from like seven or eight spaces away. And uh, the interplay between characters. So it's not just the asymmetry of the different characters, but it's also how differently it becomes the second you throw a close range thrower or brawler against like a long range fighter. So again, with my solo mode or with uh, the, you know, this actual 1v1 play, I think uh, the legs of this one, I mean, it's it's had tournament scenes and like things through level 99 for years. I think it's uh, an endlessly playable and fun game. I, I don't know what your background is with video games, Mark. Like, I don't know if you ever played uh, yeah. Street, Street From the Fighter 80s. or yeah. any of those kind yeah. of things. But he if you did, this feels palm. like playing those, but in a strategic card game instead of like a frenetic, you know, button smasher. So I, I, again, I think you'd like it, but I like Ping out too, so it's fine. <laughs> well, so, tell me about the uh, tell me about the fireballs in Pinya. Okay, so I'm gonna give, <laughs> I'm gonna call back to your love of Kanban and games like that. So, so because I uh, know a dry theme doesn't scare you. <laughs> that's true. That's true. I know a dry theme. This is so you. true. Yeah. And you know the British are all about banking, right? That's like one of your things. <laughs> I've seen Mary Poppins. I know. Uh, indeed. Yeah, we all wear builder hats when we go to work. Yep. Absolutely. But. I love the Mary Poppins call out, Will. That that was my favorite thing of today. (laughs) You're welcome. (laughs) And so, but what? Here's what I'm going to want to pitch you on. Yes, it's got got some beautiful understated art, which is is great. But take the beautiful dice rolling chaos of of the Cosmic Frog, and then you put that into your beautifully balanced Euro game. And your worker placement. And so what you're doing is based on the number you roll on the dice, you roll at the beginning of the turn, that's what you're basing your entire plan on. Based on these numbers that you roll, there's a little bit of mitigation that you can do. And the lower the number you've rolled, your worker is that much better. And you're going to take that and put that out and you're going to get a stronger action. But you're going later in the round. And the other fun thing is if you have rolled, re-rolled your die, and you put your a higher number than someone else has put, and you're pump, bumping them out. You're going to get a worse action, but you're going to get paid for it. So you're even if you have a bad roll, you're going to get a bonus for it. So it's this beautiful bit of chaos at the beginning that then you get to crunch down and really flex your Euro British banking bowler hatted brain into. <laughs> It wow. is cool. Dice placement. I definitely have to agree with Will on that. I, I do like games with dice placement. I think they work very well. Uh, Will, is Ping Yao available for people to buy yet? I actually, as we were talking, I just got an email that says freight booked. I haven't read it, but it means they booked. Oh, cool. So, that's, so what is that? Like two or three months out? That's pretty good. Or hopefully, good. who knows with the world how it is right yeah. now. <laughs> so I would assume it'll be February, March. Would be my guess. And the the, the golden porner thing uh, was that an addition to for the game as well? Yeah. Yeah, it, it came with it. And, I mean, you could go to China and pick it up right now. Like they have, <laughs> it's been published in China for a while. And does Ping Yao have a solo mode? It does. Yeah, yeah, it, it works out pretty well. It's like kind of like scenario based. It's it's kind of not that replayable once you do a given scenario, but there, there's a few in there. So I think <laughs> and it's the the, the it, it and uh, there's I think it comes with twelve different scenarios you're doing for the base game then another 12 or so yeah. with a golden potter 
Okay, so I obviously haven't played either of these games at all, so I'm going completely blind on this. Uh, and if the artwork on Ping Yao is anything like Dunhuang, then you know I know that the artwork is thematically absolutely fantastic, beautiful, beautiful artwork. What's the artwork like in Exceed, Mike? Is it it's uh, Japanese is it... animation, which I know is not everyone's bag? It's yeah, it's not like cheesecakey bad taste actually well and some of it is like street they actually have street fighter characters and like shovel knight characters so it, it's it's different for each season okay so uh, i do like a dry euro absolutely will i like a dry euro i love the idea of kind of uh, getting better every time i play working out strategies getting better each and every time i play but still having that element that comes in that's going to send me off my game and send me in a completely different direction whereas with exceed absolutely it's going to scratch a particular itch i think and that is kind of just making sure that you have this this arcade style combat that you're going to have with people and you know, Mike's designed the solo mode for it on a one-to-one -one base uh, sorry on a solo basis sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun this is a very difficult one to do having not played either of them you both put absolutely compelling cases forward for each and every one of these however however it's going to come down. I've kept a little log here of how much shade has been thrown my way. Uh, <laughs> Mike, you've thrown one element of shade my way. Will, 412 so far. <laughs> and <Rocky's laughs> been... <laughs> but I did give you Voidfall. <laughs> but you did give me Voidfall. Absolutely, yes. So it is a very, very, very difficult decision here. Uh, um, is this to go through to the final? Yes, this, will this be is for the final, final against Voidfall. Oh, oh, he's oh. going to do which one he thinks he can beat. Oh. Yeah, well, that is well, he's also, also determining which of us is the judge, which is interesting, because it's going to be me or you, Will. <laughs> so I think I am... Um... Oh, God, this is so difficult. Who wants to bribe me? Come on, bribe me with something. I will not bribe your hair. Or bribe your hair. I won't braid your hair. <laughs> or bribe your hair. I won't bribe your hair. The absence of an action, really? Yes. <laughs> I guess it's called a threat, Will. I think I think it's a threat, a threat. until you remove yeah. the threat. That is not a bribe. No, no, no. That's threat. how they do it in England. That's how they do it yeah. in England. <laughs> okay, fine. I think, um, wow. Let's go with, just to make it a very different final here, we're, I'm going to go for game style here. We're going to go for Exceed because uh, otherwise we've got two Euro style games up at the front. And I think that we'll take Voidfall against Exceed. We'll do a David and Goliath in this case, uh, this case of extremely different yeah. games. And Will, I think you're the fairest judge out of all of us. Yeah, so. <laughs> Mike, how do you feel about me as a judge? <laughs> I, I think you have your reasons. <laughs> <laughs> They're not the reasons I would have chosen, but they are logical in the standpoint you're taking, so I respect that. Oh, my gosh. That is devastating. But The grand finale. Oh, I blew it. I should have, I should have tossed out, Mark, that um, I would say Ping Yao is many times better than Dun Wong. That's what I should have tossed out there. Uh, okay. Fine. But anyhow. Well done on throwing shade on their new game. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. It's fine. <laughs> All right. Voidfall versus Exceed. I need to take, take a moment to recover from that devastation. All right. I'm recovered. Uh, go on. Let's, we'll start with Exceed. Mike's number two versus Mark's number one. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's another level 99, so it's kind of the same thing. Uh, Exceed has more variety in the fighters. Uh, Voidfall is going to have a lot, so don't get me wrong. Uh, but Exceed, even in a single season, has 12 to 16 fighters, depending on which uh, season it is, each totally different. Um, it's a ridiculously cheaper buy-in. You can get one set of Exceed uh, discount for like 15 bucks. Voidfall is going to have the amazing mind. You know, n n if, if you're certainly getting what you pay for. I'm not like criticizing Voidfall, but it's going to be an over $100 game when you get to retail and stuff. Um, Exceed, you can play, uh, I mean, usually I play a series of two or three games. It is that kind of game. It kind of plays well with that, keeping the same characters. So you kind of like get to know their deck better. But it, it is, uh, you can play it in 20 minutes if you want to. Uh, but it can also kind of stretch into a more of a tournament sort of feel to it. Uh, whereas Voidfall only has the two to three hour uh, playtime. Exceed takes almost, almost no space on your table. You can throw it down and clean it up very quickly. Voidfall is going to eat your gaming life or your dinner table for a few days, probably. Um, Exceed, you can learn in about five minutes. Voidfall, you can't. So in terms of accessibility and in terms of variety, which, you know, for me is kind of two of my main things that I love. And in terms of, uh, I mean, I, I love sci-fi themes. 
but I also love fighting games. Again, Will, I'm not sure what your video game background is as much as uh, Mark, but if, if you were ever in the arcade, put busting coins in a Mortal Kombat or, uh, or Street Fighter or any of those, they literally have Street Fighter characters in here. You could be Ryu versus Chun-Li if you want to. Well, um, I will admit, I do know the difference between Ryu and Ken. There you go. There you go. You see? know that difference. Um, yeah, and then they play slightly differently. They have similar decks in Exceed, but a little different, just like in the video game. So yeah, this is... Uh, and I, I think it's great for solo. I think it's great for competitive. And I like Voidfall too. So either way, I will I will give it up to the the Lord and Savior Will. So uh, uh, but, but Mark, before you you jump in, that's a quick question: yeah. the space of Voidfall. So I've just been seeing your defensive Procyon pictures. Yeah, Void and, Voidfall is bigger. Have you seen how big the hexes are? <laughs> well, is it is it really bigger, Mark? Each hex is going to be like the size of my head <laughs> i'm exaggerating a little bit but not too much mark right <laughs> there, there, it's going to take up some table real estate absolutely <laughs> do you know what it's going to do it's going to enhance your table that's what it's going to do whereas exceed could just get knocked off and um, maybe mistaken for some flyers that come through from the local pizza parlor that kind of thing or and your I resident think- evil game yeah, oh, well, <laughs> but I think, I think the cards in exceed the- are thicker than the player A in Resident Evil Three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I think you hit the nail right at the beginning when you introduced my, uh, this section for Mike. You said, "Mike, this is your number two. and I think <laughs> <laughs> only because he knocked out like my number it. one, just so it wouldn't be with my number two. That's the only reason my number one's not in here, just to say. Now, if, <laughs> if we're talking about a game that's a number two. Uh, you know, if that's how you want to define your game as a number two, then that's absolutely fine. Uh, then Voidfall is my premium game, the one I'm looking forward to the, the most. Now, don't get me wrong, sounds like Exceed's got this uh, kind of okay solo mode by this guy who dabbles in things a little uh, he, bit. He's, nice, he's there. Yeah. <laughs> but the fact that, Will, you, you know, uh, in your own house, yeah, your wife doesn't play Exceed, she plays Bullet. Yeah, remember that. So she doesn't play Exceed, it's Bullet. Good and navigate. she won't want to play she won't want to play Voidfall. Of course she won't, but this will give you some great alone time, that much needed alone time. You can set your wife up with Bullet, which is not Exceed because it's better. Uh, and you can play Voidfall and have a great time having <laughs> space forex Euro goodness. And you know what is available as well? Is Mike and I can both teach you Voidfall, whereas only Mike can teach you Exceed and uh, Let's face it, nobody wants to spend that much time with Mike on their own. So I think five five minutes is too long. (laughs) So I I will first off, Mark, have you have they put that quote that you just gave me for Voidfall on the advertisements? Your wife's not gonna play it because of course she won't. (laughs) Because if they haven't, they really should. They should do. I will reach out to the uh, Dorker at Mind Clash after this and, and make sure they use that on the poster. Yeah. <laughs> but as long okay. as Mike said, uh, as, as long as Mike can quote Exceed as being a number two, I think that's that's good. Yeah. So, so the, 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 the not so subtle shade of uh, comparing Mike's choice to Pooh has, <laughs> is a good move. Like that was solid. <laughs> that was very solid. But I will say, Mike did bring up a new argument of the cheapness of purchasing exceed 15 bucks that's oh that's, yeah that's pretty yeah. good that is good and yeah yeah I, I have to assume that void fall you're gonna want those expansions you're gonna it's want a those. little bit more than 15 bucks yeah, a little, little bit tad now, more. the thing that does frighten me the most about void fall is the mike sized face hex tiles that Mike's got a very small face. That's uh, what you've seen on the screen. He's actually life size. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you got to fit a lot of those hexes. I mean, a lot of stuff goes on there. So the, there, there, there is that. Triple layered I, hexes will triple. There they are. Layered. Triple layered. They what does that layered. even mean? Yep. Three layers. Three layers. <laughs> well, I know what triple layers mean, but how does that even work? <laughs> so you have different levels for putting things in the double sided, triple layered. That's what they are. I mean, it talk is about cool. I, I, you don't know what he's talking about, Will, but it is neat. I, I, will, I, will I don't, I, I, boy, I will, that's kind of break, breaking my brain a little bit. <laughs> I don't, I truly don't understand what that means. <laughs> but I think I, I'm tempted to roll that die again. That's no, no, oh, yeah, yeah. I'll come down to a die roll. This is come on, man. But I'm not <laughs> going to, I'm not going it's to be you putting your reputation and any future, I am going uh, to go with get from developers on the line. Yeah. I'm going to go with this purely 
based on actually they, they both do sound fun i would i would actually like to play both of them now purely based on the introduction of a new argument in the final round i have to give it to the poo the number two oh. of exceed yeah. Stop the steal! Stop the steal! It's not even your number one game. <laughs> I tried to, I tried to make the steal happen. All you had to do was pass Ping Yao on. <laughs> that's true. That would have been locked out. You, you did it yourself, Mark. I did indeed. And I, I and I certainly, you know, by the way, as I do like Ping Yao, I certainly would have picked Void Fall over Ping Yao. If that makes you feel better, Mark. So, oh, you defeated, yeah. you defeated yourself there. <laughs> but so uh, uh there, there you have it everybody that that is our final our winner the three idiots most exciting game that we covered last year goes to exceed which literally only i've played this is kind of ridiculous right like i think that's the only <laughs> game on the is that the only game on the entire list that not two of us have played i believe it is uh camp grizzly camp grizzly <laughs> oh you're right you're right okay good yeah. call but that, that 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 is it so the, there there is our winner I had a blast with this. I would actually like oh, yeah, absolutely. all of these now. <laughs> um, but so I will toss it to, well, I wound up in a distant third or fourth. So I'll give my closing thoughts. We'll give it to Mark next and let Mike have his victory lap, which is going to be so painful for us <laughs> at the end. They'll say, uh, I was like, thank you guys for, for, for joining me. I had a blast with this. I don't know if we've elucidated anything of a uh, great intellectual depth here, but I had a blast. And your final thoughts, Mark. Wow. I mean, that was so much fun. I think one thing that absolutely, well, two things it cemented is, first of all, there is no science behind whoever won or whatever was in this list. They're all great games, obviously. They wouldn't be on the list if they weren't great games. We all love them for a different reason. And genuinely, we all came up with four different games as well. There was no kind of crossover on there. So that's really, really, really good. Uh, it was so much fun. I think... Um, the one thing that we did absolutely cement from this, though, is the fact that we have reached the, epit the epitome and the pinnacle of the word idiot. I think, you know, we have proven this with this entire contest, and I loved every second of it. <laughs> and now the victory lap. Gird I just want to say, um, I, won't, I won't consider it a vote for Exceed, gentlemen. I'll consider it a vote for my designing from my friends. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> I want to teach That's you the solo mode. carry it through two rounds of Mark That's right. <laughs> That's right. Oh, man. No, that was fun. And yes. Well, let's all do our idiot faces again. Let's see if we remember them. I think mine was like... <laughs> there we go. There we go. That was about right. <laughs> all right. So everybody, please um, make sure you have subscribed to Not Board Gaming with Mark Dainty, a solo-focused channel. He calls it long form. We just call it long a hungry gamer <laughs> with Will Brown doing amazing coverage of competitive and solo and co-op. And let me tell you, in the One Stop Co-op Shop Discord, I get so much shade for doing competitive. So I, I will put up a, a cooperative video that everyone will like. But oh, look at you! You're doing something co-op. Oh, it's amazing. Which brings us to <laughs> check out One Stop Co-op Shop. It's not only Michael Kelly. There is the lovely Baron Dittler of Meet Me at the Table. Also of that, there's Jason Perez of Shelf Stories, and One Stop Co-op Shop. There's the OG One Stopper Colin. And I feel like I'm probably missing. Oh, and then Steve, Steve, Steve and Peter on this Peter. streaming channel on the podcast. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can, so, can I just say, by the way, by this decision of me coming second, you not just let me down, you let my wife down, who's just entered the room now. Need come and say, tell me, tell them how disappointed you are in this now. I came second to Mike and Will. Say hi, Neve. I heard you're a wonderful singer. <laughs> I hear uh, you're a great hairdresser. <laughs> they said they hear you're a wonderful singer and a great hairdresser. <laughs> My, my wife just called me and i silenced the call she's probably like hey can i come home with the kids now and i'll have to tell her yes <laughs> yes mark has released them <laughs> I've, i'm allowing them as soon as you've won i'm graciously allowing them back into your presence now then thanks, yep. thanks. all right so uh it is actually since it is a saturday for all of us all of us have things that we actually need to get to but everybody uh as always thank you so much for watching please like subscribe and share to where whichever channel you're watching this on and go find the others as always have a wonderful wonderful day Great. bye thanks, thanks guys Will. bye bye now thanks,